Hey guys, let's get more news about Steelers, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Steelers Insider Reveals Team's Lowball Offer to Tyler Boyd In the Pittsburgh Steelers' search for a WR2 to replace Deontay Johnson, one of the biggest names they have been linked to is former Cincinnati Bengals wide receiver Tyler Boyd. He has spent years as a dependable receiver in the AFC North and has expressed interest in playing for the Steelers because of his ties to the area. With the team needing a receiver in a quickly shrinking market, it seemed like a great fit. However, the two sides haven't been able to get a deal done. The Athletics' Mark Cabley even called the Steelers a long shot to land Boyd on April 2. Now it has been revealed that there is one really good reason that there has been no deal. According to 93.7, the fans' Andrew Filipponi, the Steelers only offered Boyd a contract worth $10 million over two years. Boyd has never been a star in the NFL, but he has been pretty good over the course of his eight seasons with the Bengals. Boyd was able to make an impact on his rookie contract. He went over 1,000 yards in the third and fourth seasons in the league. That earned him a nice raise from the Bengals on his second contract. They gave him a deal worth $43 million over four years. His numbers dipped after signing the deal as the team introduced some major target competition, but he was still able to make a strong contribution for the Bengals. He went over 750 yards in three of the last four seasons despite playing with a backup QB for much of two of those seasons and falling behind Jamar Chase and T. Higgins on the depth chart in the last three years. His consistent production throughout his career should have made Boyd an appealing option in free agency this offseason, and he was likely expecting quite a bit more money than what the Steelers offered when considering the contracts that other receivers have gotten this offseason. There weren't a lot of big names available in free agency at wide receiver this offseason, but there has still been plenty of money thrown around in deals for receivers over the last few weeks. There are six receivers who have already gotten more yearly money than what the Steelers were offering Boyd. Players like Hollywood Brown and Calvin Ridley getting more money than Boyd isn't a surprise, but the other four haven't put up numbers like Boyd in their careers. Darnell Mooney had 31 catches for 414 yards in 2023. This offseason he signed a deal with the Falcons that is worth $13 million per year. Gabe Davis just got a deal of his own from the Jaguars that is worth $13 million per year. His best season in the league saw him make 48 catches for 836 yards. Mike Williams' production has been similar to Boyd's in his career and he is coming off of an ACL tear. He got $10 million for the 2024 season from the Jets. Curtis Samuel hasn't reached 700 yards since 2020. The Bills gave him $8 million per year. Josh Reynolds has only reached 600 yards in a season twice. He just got $4.5 million to be the WR3 for the Broncos. When considering the deals that these other wide receivers signed, it's no surprise that Boyd wasn't interested in the $5 million per year that the Steelers offered him. Steelers encouraged to bring back recently released starter. The Pittsburgh Steelers parted ways with center Mason Cole this offseason seemingly with the hope of upgrading the middle of their offensive line. But the Steelers didn't add a center in free agency during March. So, instead of an upgrade, the Steelers have a big hole in the middle of their offensive front. To avoid bringing that hole into the NFL draft, SB Nations behind the steel curtains Kate Magzuk argued the Steelers should bring back Cole as an insurance policy. Currently, the Steelers do not have a true center under contract at all, let alone a viable starting option, Magzuk wrote. The free agent market has dried up entirely, a good one, in which several experienced centers were available. There's something to be said for a certain level of familiarity and comfortability on both the part of Cole and the Steelers' coaching staff here. Virtually all available free agent centers at this point have similar pass-blocking concerns, so why not take up with the guy you already know? Including the postseason, Cole started 35 games for the Steelers the past two seasons. He played well in 2022. 
but last season, he struggled in pass protection and with snapping the ball. Cole is as familiar with the Steelers as any NFL team. His 35 starts with Pittsburgh are more than for any other organization. He also started 32 games the Arizona Cardinals from 2018 to 20 and 7 contests for the Minnesota Vikings in 2021. The Steelers released Cole with no clear option at center to turn to on the roster. And with no free agent addition made at center yet this offseason, the Steelers still do not have a center on the roster. Head coach Mike Tomlin and general manager Omar Khan have floated backup guard Nate Herbig as a center option. But that's seemingly a last resort possibility, as he has very little previous experience at center. The Steelers saved $4.75 million against the salary cap by releasing Cole. But without him or any other center on the roster, the Steelers have essentially pigeonholed themselves into having to target a center early in the 2024 NFL draft. There are quality centers available in the 2024 draft class. But the Steelers also have significant needs at wide receiver, left tackle, and cornerback. They could use a veteran center to fall back on if the board presents more value at any of the team's other needs in the first round. Without a center on the roster, it would make a lot of sense for the Steelers to target one in the first round of the 2024 NFL Draft. But the Steelers hold the number 20 overall pick. That's typically a little early to draft a center. PFF has Oregon's Jackson Powers Johnson rated as the top center in the 2024 draft class. But he's the number 24 prospect overall. Duke's Graham Barton is another possibility at center in the draft, but PFF has him ranked the number 25 overall prospect. ESPN's consensus draft board doesn't consider either Powers Johnson or Barton a first-rounder. If the Steelers prefer to draft for value rather than need, then they will have to wait until their second pick to target center. The problem with that strategy though, is Powers Johnson and Barton could be gone when the Steelers pick again at number 51 overall. The next best center, West Virginia's Zach Frazier could be off the board too. Trading back from number 20 or up in the second round could overcome that potential problem. But the Steelers won't have to rely on a trade if they have a center as a fallback already on the roster. With Cole one of the better centers available in free agency and his likely cheap price tag, it would make sense for the Steelers to be interested in a reunion. Report, Steelers host former Commanders LB for visit. The Steelers hosted linebacker Kalik Hudson for a visit on Tuesday, per NFL insider Aaron Wilson. Hudson was drafted in the fifth round by Washington in the 2020 NFL draft out of Michigan. In his final season as a Wolverine, Hudson recorded 102 total tackles and two sacks. His best season as a pro came in 2023 with the Commanders, where the 6 feet 0 inches, 220-pound linebacker appeared in all 17 games, recording eight starts, 74 total tackles, one sack, and two passes defensed. Over his NFL career, Hudson has appeared in 58 games and recorded 12 starts. Coming out of college, he ran a 4.56-second 40-yard dash. You can read part of NFL.com's Lance Zierlein's 2020 scouting report for him below, undersized safety-turned-linebacker who summons toughness and spunk to counterbalance his lack of traits. The production has been fairly impressive in two of the last three seasons, but he's quicker than fast and his range is limited. Hudson's lack of size shows up near the line of scrimmage and he's not as sticky in coverage as he needs to be. His talent for blocking punts should garner attention, but may not be enough to overcome deficiencies at linebacker or safety. In an interesting coincidence, Hudson was selected by Washington with a pick that was originally held by the Steelers. However, Pittsburgh traded the pick to Seattle in exchange for tight end Nick Vanett in 2019. The Seahawks then flipped the pick to Washington in exchange for cornerback Quinton Dunbar, and Washington eventually drafted Hudson with the pick. The Steelers more or less traded Hudson for Vanett in 2019, but in a full-circle moment, they could be adding Hudson to their roster years later. 
The Steelers signed a big-name linebacker in Patrick Queen during free agency but still seem interested in adding depth at the position. With a unique skill set as a former safety, plenty of NFL experience, and special teams ability, Hudson could be an intriguing option for the Steelers. And you, fan, what do you think of the situation of Kalik Hudson? Leave your opinion in the comments.